Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome back to another professional match of StarCraft 2. Now what I got for you today is a Terran vs Zerg played in the new multiplayer balance patch of SC2, but the reason why I am really excited to be covering this game for you is because of the Zerg player spawning here in the top right hand corner of Lost and Found LE. If you watched StarCraft 2 back in like 2011 to like 2014 or so, you may have already recognized the abbreviation of his nickname. After recently wrapping up his mandatory military service, he decided to give pro gaming another shot. We have none other than Dong Regu, or of course, DRG. And his opponent spawning in the opposite corner of the map. He's playing with the blue Terran SCVs. I consider this man to be the strongest player over in China. One of the most solid and standard Terran players you can find. And with standard, of course, I mean he's capable of just simply playing a very quote-unquote normal game where he produces a lot of stuff. We have none other than time. Now, this is the new multiplayer balance patch, so that does mean that we may very well be up for some crazy strategies. I mean, if you missed yesterday's video, I'll go ahead and post a link to it down below in the description of this one, because there's no denying that apparently battle cruisers are really, really, really good. Now, DRG, he was an absolute legend back in the day. I remember watching him play before I started casting games myself uh, for many, many years. He even won a GSL code S. Apparently, um, over at his live stream, he mentioned that he is planning to once again participate in the GSL Code S next year as well. He wants to see if he can qualify once more. And apparently, he's already climbed all the way back up to 6.5k MMR, which will put him at rank 7 on the Korean StarCraft 2 ladder, which is absolutely insane for a man who's only really been back for a couple of weeks at this point. We'll see. We'll see how the new multiplayer patch is gonna treat him. But I am really excited for this, because there's no denying that I was a massive fan of watching him dominate. So far though, very, very normal opener here from both players. Obviously, um, time could be going for something a little bit out of the ordinary, but honestly, I always consider time to be, like I mentioned already, right, that really standard Terran player. He's really good at just simply producing a lot of units and at executing the very classic Terran timing attacks. He's very similar to, for example, like an innovation in that way. While innovation may have just a little bit of a stronger macro, um, time is just really, really good at, at the all-round Terran strategies. And while you will cheese every once in a while, he doesn't really do so very, very regularly. At the very least, not in the games that I've seen him play recently. Zerg, though, going for that really quick third hatchery here as well. Nothing crazy coming up just yet. Now, I've been playing the multiplayer patch quite a lot myself, and for those of you that have been watching the live stream, you're probably aware of the fact that I've been trying to work on my Mutaling Bane micro. And I was thinking about this right before I pressed the record button, DRG used to be really, really good at playing that Mutaling Bane style. Now, obviously over the recent couple of years, Hydraling Bane has really become the standard, but in the new multiplayer balance patch, Hydra's basically got an attack speed reduction and Mutalisk are much stronger now that Thors are not as hard of a counter to them anymore. Basically Thors, uh, they are much more of a late game unit right now where they are specializing in, for example, taking care of Brute Lords and taking care of Ultralisk and that kind of army. Um, I, I've kind of got a feeling, and I've been testing this quite a bit myself, that Mutas may very well be making a bit of a comeback. So I don't know if DRG is planning to do something similar in this game here as well, but it does really lend to his playstyle really well, or at the very least the playstyle that I remember him playing, and, you know, there, there might very well be room for that once again in the current meta. Look at this, Fred though, right? Really nicely done here by, uh, by time preventing anything from getting into his natural. The Viking is out here in time as well, pun intended, <laughs> to kill this overlord before it gets any vision. And that means that Dark, uh, or rather DRG, is going to be in the dark. Dark is another Zerg player, Loco. Not to be confused. Not to be confused. Now, a couple roaches, though, are already coming up. Really quick roach warn, actually, all things considered. And a rather quick lair here, too, from DRG. This doesn't really line up very well with the Roach Warren timing, so he's likely planning to transition to watch something else here in the mid-game. Now, I love this push here that time is going for. So basically, he got himself the Concussive Shell upgrade, which will allow him to relatively easily pick off um, Queens. 
So if you, for example, manage to hit that concussive shell on one of those queens, the Hellions and Hellbats can easily close the distance, and even now the Viking that killed the Overlord has now been landed, and it's gonna try and see if it can potentially deal some damage as well. Now, a couple Ravagers, though, are already available. Queens are pulled off of their hatcheries as well, and I think the DRG is gonna be able to pull this, or rather push this back with relative ease. This is one of those pushes that the Terran players just went for. Ooh, actually, the Zerklings are trying to move forward. Oh, beautiful Biles. Great move there by DRG. Hugging all of those Hellions while they were transforming into their Hellion mode. And then the Biles from up above. Beautiful move there by the Zerg player. But regardless, uh, this is one of those uh, builds from Terran here that can absolutely punish a Zerg player that decided to go for a little bit too quick of a lair. And maybe uh, skipped out, for example, either the Bailing Nest or the Roach Warren. And there's, there's quite a lot of Zerg players that do exactly that. Now look at this. <sighs> Speaking of the devil, okay. I, I hope this is not for Corruptors. He did already make uh, quite a lot of Ravagers here. If he makes more, Mutas are going to be difficult to afford. But there's no denying that this is one of those strategies that I would love to see DRG execute. There we go, though. Another Ravager's coming up. So he might still be deciding to go for maybe a little bit of aggression. The sixth gas was taken. Yeah. I think this has to be Mutalisk. All right. Well, there's a little bit of aggression here near the front. A lot of drones, though, are being followed up here. So I don't think DRG is really going to commit here. Great micro, by the way, by time. Time, by the way, playing that really gold standard army composition. No second factory just yet. Late upgrades, actually, for him as well. But speaking of late upgrades, DRG is much, much later on his. Usually we don't see these Evo Chambers until, at the very latest, at like 5 minutes and 30 seconds. I don't think these started until like 6 minutes or so in game time. Melee and Carapace is coming up. Spire is just about to finish. Is it going to be Mutas? There's not a lot of gas saved up here, but normally you don't take the 6 gas until a little while later. Is this going to be Muta play? Oh, I think it is. Yeah. He starts up the uh, Flyer attack weapons here. So I think this has to be Mutalisk. I mean, I don't see any on the production tab just yet. We'll have to keep an eye out on it. There we go. Six Mutalisk are queued up. Okay, so I, I briefly talked about it just now, right? Here's the thing. Hydralisk are a little bit weaker than they once were. Their attack speed just simply got nerfed straight up. Mutas, because of that, already are, of course, a lot more potent because you kind of want to make something in the mid-game before you tech up towards those Ultralisk. Now, because of the fact that Thors now are not nearly as good as they once were, I mean, they, in the current version of SC2, right, they have a lot of damage that they can put out because of the, uh, because of the splash that they managed to deal to Mutalisk, but they also got an additional armor point. In this version of SC2, in the upcoming balance patch, they got one less armor, and on top of that, they also uh, just simply are much more of a late-game focused unit. So I think that Mutas might very well be viable. Now, the reason why they can be really strong is because of the amount of micro that you can pull off. And with the lack of missile turrets, these SCVs will be dropping like flies. Only Marines are currently available. Now, DRG played this style for years. A missile turret eventually is coming up. There's a single Liberator still being a nuisance, but that's a lot of dead SCVs already. Eventually, though, I think Marines should be able to shoot this away. But DRG is showing us the micro that he is capable of. Ooh, nice catch there, though, by time. Does manage to get himself a couple of those Mutas, but that's still 21 worker kills here in total. And that's kind of what Mutas are good at, right? They're really good at that harass. They're really, really good. Another Muta, by the way, ended up going down there. But they're really good at, like, picking up reinforcements and picking up these sieged-up tanks if they do not have that protection. Now, the reason why I have been trying Muta play myself is because I think they're going to be really good. But the reason also why I haven't really been able to get a lot of value out of them personally is because Mutas really only are good if you can micro really well. <laughs> and while my micro is much better than it once was, um, yeah, it's still not nearly as good as I would like it to be. Let's just leave it at that. This almost looks like a stalker of one match right now, right? I mean, there's a bailing nest somewhere, but it's really Hydra Link or, or rather Muta Link focused. Nicely done. And I guess, uh, speaking of Stalker of One, I mean, Siege Tank, uh, Siege Tank Marine, definitely not very uncommon here either. Alrighty, so let's see how this game is gonna play out. Time is sitting in a really nicely defendable position. 
Right, the Mutas are gonna roam around, and actually they might be able to get like another siege tank right here for their troubles. Going after the second tank as well, that's a big pickup there. Two siege tanks in total. Yeah, eventually time is gonna add on that missile, or rather the, the sensor tower here to see the Mutas from coming up. But this is one of those things where time should be able to defend it eventually. He's getting himself that fourth base up right now. Well, this will definitely be counted with relative ease. That's still a lot of links and banes though. Very low bane link count here in general though. A Thor is coming up, that's mostly just to force that magic box micro from those Mutalisk. But with the uh, armor reduction, I don't think the Mutas really are gonna care all too much. Banelings though, ooh, okay, he's just gonna force his way through that. The Banelings are just simply gonna roll into the mineral line right now as well. A couple of Zerklings are left over too. That was a good deflection here though from time at the same time. Pun not intended. We see a Zirkling run by here towards the fourth base. They're gonna be able to pick up two of those units with relative ease. Two of those siege tanks, though. Couple of Medivex loaded up with Marines. They're gonna try and shoo away those Mutalisk, and it looks like they will be able to do so. At the same time, the Zirklings will try and pick up the fourth base, but that was some excellent defense there by time, and he prevents that fourth from ever falling. Still, though, 29 SCP kills here in the grand scheme of things. That's a lot. If the Planetary Fortress here finishes up, I think that the Terran player is going to be in a good spot. He does need to repair this, by the way. It's going to burn down. Okay, there we go. One SCV is indeed going to be tasked with that duty. But you can see the Mutas, though. They're just dashing in and out. They're just dashing in and out. And I think a lot of them actually still went down. Yeah, that's five Muta kills uh, here in total. And most of them are sloppy. Speaking of sloppy Miss Micro there, that could have cost them another Muta right there. You got to be extremely careful with the way that you control these uh, flying Zerg units. Now, I've always been kind of disappointed with how few Mutas we see in the current meta of SC2. But hold that thought, because once again, Zerk is gonna aggressively try and push forward. Now, the initial bit of aggression went really well here for Zerk. Once again, though, oh, those Banelings. That was a good deflection there once again by time, but more and more workers continuously end up going down. That's 41 workers here in total already. The Thor will be picked up. It's boosting towards the fourth base. To try and prevent these Mutas from really getting in there. Missile turret will be target fired down as well. Ooh, apparently he does not commit. I think he could have gotten that relatively easily, but... Yeah, like, imagine though, right? Imagine though... Uh, imagine if, like, a top-of-the-line Zerg player right now... Like, for example, a Cero or a Dark or a Rogue or a Sue would play with these Mutas. He probably would have only lost, like, one or two at this point. Imagine, like... 25 Mutas roaming the map at this point. That would be absolutely ridiculous. 25 Mutas are perfectly capable of picking up dropships just by themselves, right? Now, it's it's curious though, how exactly our Terran player is going to be able to defend against this? I think you're going to have to leave some RB behind, which is going to hurt these Terran timing attacks quite a bit. Great drop here, though, in the bottom right-hand corner. A lot of Terran players get scared if you do get to this uh, scenario in the game where drop play can become, uh, you know, uh, easily countered, I guess. Mutas are, of course, perfectly capable of killing these Medivex as well. There we go. That hatchery should 100%, ooh, not even be cancelled. Solid timing there by time. And he's even gonna get a couple more Mutalisk for his troubles as well. No target firing here. But I think that Terran players will probably pick that kind of thing up very, very quickly in the near future. Ooh, a big amount of units, though. It's currently making its way towards the fourth base of the Terran player. The Banelings are rolling forward aggressively. They kill those Widow Mines with ease. And apparently, the Planetary Fortress there as well. At the same time, the Lings and the Mutas once again are making their way towards the third base. DRG is playing a very aggressive Zerg style, trying to swarm over his opponent, now even burrowing a couple of those Zerklings as well. Two command centers ended up falling here in just a couple of seconds and apparently that means that time thinks it's time to move onto the creep and to shove forward with what looks to be an all-in scenario. So many Zerklings and Banelings though are now coming up. Look at that production tap as well. 3-3 three, three upgrades as well as the uh, chitinous plating here for Zerg will eventually finish but the Zerg is not gonna be able to wait for that I don't think. There's a lot of creep here still available though, so that's gonna make this engagement very, very difficult. The scan did come down very late, but here comes the swarm. Mutas are being picked up by these stores. Great target firing right there by time, but I don't think he's got enough. Sometimes StarCraft 2 is just a numbers game, and DRG eventually manages to overwhelm his opponent with a very, I guess, 2011, 2012-ish 
uh, focus playstyle. That is so cool. So an old school Zerg player decides to return and he can play a strategy that he was very well known for. That is so sick. Um, I was trying to bring it up during during the game, I suppose, but I guess I, 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 you know, I had to commentate what was actually going on. But I've always thought it was a little bit disappointing how few mutas we've been seeing over the last couple of years. I mean, I know that, for example, like Raynor has been trying to make them work, but he, he's been playing them, for example, in like Zerg versus Protoss while playing Hydraling Bane. He's got like an additional hotkey from mutas, and they're never actually meant for fighting, but they're always there for harass. You know, he's using them to pick up War Prisms and to maybe pick up like a Medivac against Terran. But they're always really there for Harass to jump into the main base while the opposing player is distracted with a push across the map. And, uh, you know, uh, while, while Mutas are technically pretty good, right, in the current version of SC2, I mean, this was obviously the new balance patch, right, the one that we just watched. Um, they're only really good if you have like 500 APM. Like, I'm not even kidding. Like, 500 APM is not an exaggeration. You need like 500 APM to make it work in combination of Hydraling Bane or, or in combination with Hydraling Bane. So it's, it's cool to see that Muras might very well once again be a core unit in SC2. And while they may be just a little bit too strong, <laughs> we'll see how this is going to go. I have no idea how, for example, Muras would face off against battle cruisers. Right? I have no idea how the new Widow Mine with its cloaking field, or I guess after the Drilling Claws upgrades, it gets cloaked when it's burrowed. Anyway, um, there, there's, a, there's a lot of potential here for these, uh, for these uh, units to once again become viable, but it's going to take some time for Terran players to figure out how to play against it. I mean, time, I think with the initial aggression, he lost like 21 SCVs or so. That's just a matter of Terran players dropping one less mule, scanning one more time and figuring out if it's Hydra play, Infestation Pit play, or of course Spire play. And um, he, he probably would have been able to just simply put up a couple of missile turrets blindly as well, just in case. Just like, for example, Zerg players do against Protoss, right? Where they just simply get a bunch of missile turrets if they scout very little, just in case it is going to be Dark Templar or just in case it's going to be Stargate. Maybe Terran players will have to do something similar as well if they're going up against Zerg now, just in case it is going to be Mutas. It's it's gonna be it's gonna be hard to say, or it's gonna be uh, some time before we uh, before we really see where the meta will settle. But I'm really excited for it. I hope you are as well. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile. All right. A special shout out to the Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for directly supporting this channel. But I'll see you once again in the next one.